good stuff. I don't know if you guys tried the cotton candy flavored Fago yet, but it's fantastic. And we are back downstairs again, as you can probably see. And we have uh, Emily's uh, ECU here. This is for Hubert, and the plan is to build this pretty close to Simon's ECU, but first we're just going to trigger ignition with it. And we're gonna run the 48 IDAs. But being able to run the ignition and having this in there, we'll be able to collect all the data, like uh, you know, air temps, oil temps, um, a, um, O2 sense, sensor, and uh, amongst other things, probably if we get really fancy, we can do the fuel pressure and oil pressure. But first, if you're following along from the last video, if not, I'll update you. We uh, went through and added some jumper wires, like this one right here, and then we moved, uh, we didn't add them, we didn't add them. We moved them around. They were already on the board. They were just set up for a VR sensor, this one and this one. And I don't think we I don't think we needed to touch this one. But basically the reason we had to move those around because we're gonna be running a hall sensor. But there was some other stuff missing on this board and I did a little investigating and you know, like I mentioned before, if you're building one of these boards, it's always good to print out your, your, your assembly board uh, guide. And I was able to kind of go through and find what was missing via the assembly guide. I'll show you guys that in a minute. And, you know, just kind of comparing what's on the board to there. And I've been in touch with uh, DIY Auto Tunes, and that is where I purchased this lovely little box of parts. <laughs> um, basically, this video, I'm just going to kind of shortly, briefly show you, you know, kind of how easy these are to build. Uh, you can do paint by numbers and some simple soldering. Uh, you can assemble one of these yourself and save yourself a couple hundred bucks. Um, plus, it gets you, you know, an idea what's all involved in one of these. So if you do have issues or want to make upgrades or changes, you can do it yourself. And I'm just going to kind of show you. I'm not going to do the whole build. I won't bore you with all that. But just kind of wanted to show you. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> but yeah, I got through the board and with DIY, you know, their, their uh, support is really helpful. And I mentioned earlier, I did have a D8. Yeah, they come in these little bags and they are well labeled. And this is a diode. I ordered some diodes, uh, some resistors. And you know, when you order these, you got to order more than what you probably need. But it's always good to have spares. Uh, some capacitors, more capacitors. What is this? This is, it says trans NPM, transformer or transistor or something. Probably a transistor. Here's some more transistors and some more transistors. I believe that's what those are. Uh, paperwork will probably tell me. Don't get that too close to solder iron, it's heating up. I need to start any fires today. Capacitor, transistor, yep, transistor, trans resistor, and of course shipping. I was kind of quite surprised that uh, DIY had those. I had to go in and do a search for them, and I hope that I you know, found the right ones. Uh, we'll try to verify that with the assembly guide and what's written on these things. <laughs> if we put it all together, it doesn't work. We know we got the wrong parts. <laughs> Just cross our fingers and hope that doesn't happen. But yeah, let's get the solder iron heated up, uh, get the assembly guide booted up, and I'll kind of show you kind of how this works. Got the Megasquirt assembly uh, guide opened up here, and it's basically on website uh, megamanual.com, somewhere in there, MS2 uh, V3 assembly. So that's for the V3 board. Now I'm going to need these things here. So what were some of the things I purchased? Uh, I'll put them on this list here. I did get a Q9, a Q12, a Q19. Those are all listed on here. Well, they start working on the hall sensor. That's my main concern right now. I do need, to, okay, what's this one here? F1, U5. I'm doing a Q, Q9, I think. A Q9 and a Q12. I don't know if I need an insulator for those or not. Okay, now we're in the distributor. So we're in the hall build here. Get me a self a pointer. This is to install the hall optic input circuit. We're gonna follow these steps here. So first it says install and solder R12. So I need to find on, um, you can find it on here, where R12 is. And it will tell you on here, but basically on here it'll tell you um, this is installed between the resistor you have just um, installed, which would be a, per, a step before, and the CPU socket. So CPU socket's gonna be our three millimeters above the surface. Yeah, I know this one's on here, because this is the one that's on here, really, oh, there it is, really high. It's this one here, and you can see that this, this R12 sits way above the board than all the other resistors. And they, and they do that, because um, I think that one gets a little hotter. Reviewing the uh, hall 
sensor input here. I do see I ordered a C12. Down here, loader, loader, later, I got a C30. DIY I did say if I was going to use one of these circuits, uh, I think it's the tax select op out circuit that I should install these. Basically, I think these have something to do with the, the noise. So perfect opportunity to kind of show you how this <laughs> paint by number things work. So on here it says uh, C12, which is a capacitor. So I did order C12. So we go through the little packages and find it. Yeah, if you look on here, you can see that there's a whole bunch of different um, capacitors on here and one of them C12. So we need to put that in a C12 position. And again, there's a bunch of different ones on here too. They're basically the same capacitor, but they just go different places on the board. So now that we have located those, we have to get our diagram back out and look for them. And they give you a description on there. And they say they're right above, located right above the uh, Boeing Gripple location. You look for C12 and C30. So now you go find that on the board. This board is pretty much an exact duplicate. And you can see that right here, they're missing. C12 and C30. So my job today, this particular step, is to solder those in position. So I'm gonna get that done, and then we'll skip on to the next step. Now I will need these. <laughs> and to verify that we have the right uh, capacitor, it is listed on here. So C12 is a 399-4202. And on this package here, it says 399-2017. Hmm. Those numbers don't add up, but it's a 0, 0, 0.001 UF. That's just a 0, 0.001 UF, 100 volt, 102 marking. What's a 102 marking mean? The one line does state that you can use different values of these, basically depending on your noise frequency. And they say that this 0, 0.001 is a good uh, starting point, but you can use all the way up to point, point 0.1 depending on your noise interference. How do they print that small? Yeah, that definitely says a 102. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that this is the correct one. We are going to put it in C12 spot, and then we'll put, double check the, well, let's, the guys, got you guys here right now. Let's double check the C30, see if they got it written on here. C30 is a 394353, 4353. Yeah, so this one's the same one that's on there. But yeah, these should be the correct one, so let's get to work. All right, next up is these little teeny tiny things, um, these little transistors, and they are tiny. They actually fit, and they go in these little tiny spots here. These are little Q19, Q2, and Q4, and they are a transistor. Stall and solder transistor Q2 and Q4. These are located next to the MOV1. These, uh, unlike the resistors or the capacitors, these go in one way. You can see that there's a flat side and a round side. So that's the way they got to go in. These should be the same shape. I haven't opened them up and looked at them, but they should be. A ZTX450ND. All right, yeah, these are from DigiKey. So yeah, I got to make sure that I get the Q2 and Q4 going slots here. And then Q19 and Q20 going the other ones. All right, so I already, there's already a Q4 on here or Q2 on here. So I need to put a Q4 in here. And when, when you're dealing with these little guys here, um, keep them in the bag, because the bag is labeled. And you wanna go be looking in the near future and wonder what the heck they are. Yeah, see these kind of have a, this kind of has a flat side, kind of has a rounded side. And they said something about the painted white number. So there's a writing on one side and not the other. So let's double check and see what they, what they wanted with that. I'm assuming the round side still goes towards the MOV1. And I got number four here, and we are going to put that in the number four slot, which goes right here. Let's see if I can get it through there. So yeah, I'm gonna have to <laughs> concentrate on these because these are really, really small and we don't wanna get the solder all mixed together. Man, those are really close here, take a look. <laughs> yeah, these really long things here, you, you can see that uh, I just soldered them in. And I found it a little easier to spread them apart here a little bit. Help hold them in the board, because you know, I had the board kind of on an angle and it kept wanting to fall out. Plus it gave you a little more room to run your solder iron in there. So <laughs> yeah, let's see what the next thing is I need to solder up. All right, I'm gonna mount this uh, diode 
and diodes, uh, they're directional. You can only put them in the directional, just like the transistors. I believe the capacitors and resistors doesn't really matter, but you know, to keep the board neat, I always try to keep everything facing the same way. Just my OCD. I believe on the diodes, it's the black band on here. Let me get this opened up here. Yeah, you see this black band on the, on the diode? That's the direction. And if you look on the board, it's kind of hidden underneath this big black round thing, but you should be able to see a little, little stripe on that where it says D8. D8, right? Is that what I got going on there? Yep. D8 or D4. Um, you can see that little little stripe on there. That's where the black band goes. So I'm going to put that on there, and it looks like I still need to order some more parts. Oh, I actually think I got to take a jump wire off, too. Yeah, I got to take a jump wire off this R39, too, and actually put the, the resistor in that. I'm going to get that done, and I'll be right back with you. Well, that's about all I can show you today. I got to get some parts ordered. I need to order some more resistors. Reading down further in the manual, didn't know I needed them. <laughs> Transistors that go on the heat sink here um, require an insulator, and I didn't order those either. There's a special uh, screw and washers and a little sheet of plastic that goes on that heat sink. And these are basically uh, flyback circuits for like running the uh, low impedance injectors, which we're probably not going to run them, but. You never know, you might come in a jam and that's all you have. <laughs> so I'm gonna put them in. Like I said, I'm trying to build this board like uh, like Simon's board. But yeah, now I didn't bring a set of wire cutters with me, but <laughs> got all these tabs to, uh, to cut off. And the longer ones, I'm gonna put them in one of these bags here for future use so I don't have to cut them off of a new resistor or dot capacitor or whatever. But yeah, that's the fun part, um, getting the old uh, <laughs> wire cutters out and Starting to cut those off. That basically is that feeling that, you know, we are completed. But I'm not completed yet, so that'll be for a future thing. But yeah, but I'm going to leave you with this. And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, this is just uh, my way of kind of showing you that these guys aren't that hard to put together. And I hope you enjoy this. If you like putting things together yourself and, in, and also like saving money, I highly uh, recommend it. But yeah, until next time, keep cruising, keep shifting those gears, and always enjoy the ride. I'm out of here. Oh yeah, and one more thing. Don't forget to unplug your solder iron. <laughs> Little safety tip for you. Let's go. Before I was just another guy.